Hello, everyone, and welcome to my session, Deploy N Applications to N Clusters Using Argo CD Application Set. My name is Dewan Ahmed. I'm a developer advocate at Red Hat, and I'm from the beautiful New Brunswick in the Atlantic Canada region. I love everything cloud native with a focus on DevOps and GitOps tools. Besides work, I love to play pool and ping pong, and I'm also a freelance career coach. I help students, new grads, and professionals to start or transition into the software industry. We have a packed agenda today. I'll cover some highlights or, or ideas behind GitOps. Uh, then I'll go over Argo CD. Although this session focuses primarily on application set, I understand that some of the folks might be very new to Argo CD. So a quick primer with Argo CD will be helpful for them. We have a demo for both Argo CD and application set. At the end, we'll have a Q&A session and all the resources are in the GitHub repository, which you can see at the bottom right corner of your screen. If you're watching this session on a mobile device, you can uh, who came up with the term GitOps? Uh, Alexis Richardson, the current CEO of uh, WeaveWorks, uh, he came up with the term GitOps and he ran it by his friend. Uh, his friend thought that's the ugliest word he ever heard and now he can't unhear it. Trying to come up with a term that is uh, easy to pronounce but also difficult to forget. Alexis uh, realized that he came up with, he found that perfect term. Uh, now, this slide is from Luis Fasira, uh, and it summarizes uh, GitOps in, in, in one slide. So we use Git as the single source of truth of a system. We use Git as the single place where you operate. Uh, we don't operate directly on the cluster. We use Git to do any create, update, or destroy of environments. All the changes are observable and verifiable. So keeping that in mind, let's understand GitOps. Scratch that and let's understand GitOps for Kubernetes. So Kubernetes gives us the power of declaration. That means everything uh, in Kubernetes model, you can describe declaratively. Uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, Updates provide a mechanism for automating the process of applying a set of changes directly, uh, correctly, and in a timely manner. Uh, Kubernetes will try to keep updates until it succeeds, which is convergence. Idempotence means that multiple applications trying to converge will always have the same outcome regardless of how many times you're applying the command. And finally, for determinism, assuming that you have adequate resources, the updated cluster state depends only on the desired state. So you should avoid using kubectl to update the cluster and especially avoid using scripts to group kubectl commands together. Instead, use a GitOps tool uh, so that the user or developer can update their Kubernetes cluster via Git. So what does that provide us? That provides us correctness. That means a group of updates may be applied, conversed, and finally validated, which gets us closer to the goal of atomic deployment. It provides us security. So we should limit the scope of access to a Kubernetes cluster uh, to automation tools and cluster administrators who may have to debug it or keep it running. And that's a tweet by the famous Kelsey Hightower. Finally, kubectl exposes the machinery of Kubernetes object model, which is quite complex. Ideally, your users or developers should interact with the system at a higher level of abstraction. So based our, on our discussion so far, these are the parts or bill of materials that we need to do GitOps on Kubernetes. First, we need the Git repos where the configuration code lies and we need Kubernetes cluster or clusters where you'd like to deploy your code. Uh, then you need some sort of manifest generation tools like customize for different environments such as dev, pre-pod, prod. This is optional, however. 
then don't use a CI server to orchestrate direct updates to Kubernetes as a set of CI jobs. Now I added a link in the resources section in the GitHub repo that goes much more in details why uh, you should not use CI servers to do CD. Finally, your Kubernetes manifest files are needed such as deployment services, uh, et cetera. So keeping these in mind, uh, if we're looking for a GitOps tool, Argo CD uh, is an ideal choice. So what is Argo CD? Argo CD is a declarative GitOps continuous delivery tool for Kubernetes. It is part of an open source project uh, which has contributors from both small and large companies like IBM, Red Hat, Intuit, as well as many individual contributors. This project has also been adopted by a number of companies, and you can find a list of that companies under the Argo CD's GitHub repository. So why Argo CD? So the first three points have been covered before, where we use Git as the single source of truth, it's being developer-centric, where you use Git commands to make any updates to your application delivery and being declarative. Now let's talk about security. So Argo CD provides SSO integration, including OIDC, OAuth2, and more. It provides multi-tenancy and RBAC policies for authorization. It also gives audit trails for application events and API calls. You can roll back your deployment to any application configuration committed in Git repository, either using the CLI or the UI. Argo CD app diff, the command, that performs a diff against the target and live state. So you can observe the drift and that can be done by the UI as well. So all these features and many more help your engineering teams to have a higher velocity in terms of their application delivery. So this is the Argo CD architectural diagram, which is from the Argo CD Read the Docs webpage. So here, the blue box in the, in, in the right-hand side is the, the Argo CD. Uh, so Argo CD is implemented as a Kubernetes controller, which uh, constantly monitors running applications and compares the current and live state against the desired state as specified in, in the Git repo. A deployed application uh, whose live state deviates from the target state is considered out of sync. The API server, which you can see right here where I hover my mouse, is a G gRPC and REST server, which exposes the API consumed by either the web UI or the CLI or the CI CD systems. Now, the repository server, which you can see right here, is an internal service which maintains a local cache of the Git repository holding the application manifests. Now the synchronization uh, can be done using sync hooks uh, and you can have different use cases to perform these pre, during, or post sync. One use case of such sync hooks could be if you want to orchestrate a complex deployment, which requires more sophistication than the typical Kubernetes rolling update strategy, you can do that. And on the bottom right, you can see your application being deployed into many clusters. All right, so enough theory. Let's dive right into the Argo CD demo. So for this demo, what I have is an OpenShift cluster and we installed Red Hat OpenShift GitOps operator on this cluster. So this operator gives us out of the box Argo CD instance. Uh, this is the Argo CD instance, which I connected to. Uh, let's create an Argo CD application. So this is my application manifest. So I'm gonna deploy a customized guestbook application, which has a deployment file, a service file, and, and a customization file. So let me copy the link of this, uh, this configuration repo. So I can do that from CLI as well, but I'm choosing to use the UI to create this sample application. I can give it a name, let's say a devconf demo, 
uh, I'm going to choose default project, which is Argo CD project and not your Kubernetes namespace. For sync policy, I'm going to choose automatic sync. I'm going to check these two, which says I've, Argo CD will prune resources if they're no longer in Git. And self fail means if I make any changes directly on the cluster rather than Git, Argo will force and override the, the changes I'm making directly on the cluster and will have the state defined in Git reflect onto the cluster. So the repository URL is the URL I just copied and the, the path is customized dash guestbook. So it should automatically pre-populate customized dash guestbook right here. This is the cluster URL is on the cluster where Argo City is deployed and not the remote cluster. So this is the default service, the namespace. Uh, so you can, uh, deploy the application of the same namespace, which is Argo CD, uh, where Argo CD is installed, or you can choose a different namespace. So on OpenShift, what I did was I created a namespace called guestbook-devconf, and I added a small label, which is managed by OpenShift GitOps. What this allows is OpenShift GitOps controller to, to make changes in, in that namespace. So since I already have it, uh, I can deploy into the guestbook dash devconf uh, namespace. So let me choose that guestbook dash devconf. All right, looks good. I'll add a prefix. Now let's say XYZ dash uh, and create. So once I create, since I have auto sync enabled, you can see that yeah, your application uh, was deployed. It creates the service and the deployment. And if I see my um, deployment.yaml, uh, I can see I have three replicas and you can see uh, three pods. Uh, and how about if I make any changes? Uh, if I change this, of course, uh, you should do a proper PR process, but uh, for this demo, I'm making change directly uh, to the main. So if I commit the change, let's see what happens to my application. Once I make this change, um, let's hit refresh. We should see the application goes out of sync, but since I have auto sync enabled, the, the state of the cluster will be uh, matched to the state defined in Git, which is a single replica. And you see the number of pod went down from three to one. I can delete my application. So if I hit delete, uh, dev comes dash demo, and here I have deleted the application. So that was the uh, quick demo of uh, Argo CD. Uh, so let's go back to the presentation. Now that was all nice. We deployed a single application to a single cluster. But what if you want to deploy Argo City application to multiple Kubernetes cluster at once? Or how about deploying multiple Argo City application from a single mono repo? Uh, introducing application set controller for Argo CD. So on the left of the screen, you can see that application set controller is sitting in the middle uh, and it's, it's looking over your Git repositories and then it's creating multiple Argo CD application across multiple clusters. So our, unlike Argo CD application resource, which deploys resources from a single Git repository to a single destination cluster or namespace, application set uses templated automation to create, modify, and manage multiple Argo CD applications simultaneously targeting multiple destination cluster and namespaces. So the application set controller is installed alongside Argo CD within the same namespace. That means on your cluster, you have to have Argo CD installed first uh, on the Argo CD namespace and on the same namespace, you install application set controller as well. So in this example, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen in this YAML line number two shows the kind being application set uh, the list generator passes the URL and the cluster fields into the application template as parameters. So if you see line number 11 and 12, the URL and cluster, these are going into the template, which is basically an Argo CD application template. And on line number 21, you see that there's cluster value which being renders. And then on line number 29, you can see the URL uh, value uh, being rendered into the template. 
Now, targeting new clusters is simply a matter of you just add new elements into the application set resource, and the corresponding Argo City application would be automatically created. How does application set controller work? Now, the sole responsibility of the application set, application set controller is to create, update, and delete application resources within the Argo CD namespace. The controller's only job is to ensure that our application resources remain consistent with the defined declarative application set resource, nothing more. Thus, the application set controller does not create, modify, or delete Kubernetes resources other than the application CR. It does not connect to cluster other than the ones Argo CD is deployed to. It does not interact with namespace other than the one Argo, where Argo CD is deployed within. It is Argo CD itself that is responsible for the actual deployment of the generated child application resources, such as deployments, services, and config maps. So the application set controller can be thought of an application factory. So it takes an application set resource as input, which you can see from the Git uh, icon right here, and outputting one or more Argo CD application resources that correspond to the parameters of that set. So application set has a number of generators, uh, list generator, cluster generator, kit generator, and some of the recently added generators in this list. Uh, but for the demo, we'll cover only few of these generators starting with uh, list generator. So if you want to uh, check out these uh, generators in much more detail, you can go to the read the docs uh, for application set. So for now, I'll come back to the presentation. And it's time for application set controller demo. All right. so. Let me start the demo. So here I have the application set uh, list generator uh, demo. So if, if you see uh, for the list generator, uh, the type is application set and in the spec, we provide the generator type as list. And here you add your local and remote clusters. And based on the template definition of the application, your applications will be divided into your application will be deployed into n number of clusters, which are defined here. So coming back to the demo. So this is uh, engineering dev, which is the local cluster where your Argo CD is installed. So if I go to cluster, I can see that both of the clusters are there because I did an Argo CD cluster add to add the engineering prod cluster already. And here in the uh, source repo URL, you can see the application uh, uh, which we're trying to deploy. So the manifest are in, in, in that source repo URL. It also shows the path, uh, so similar to the guestbook application, which was customized slash guestbook. It also has that example uh, path for that for that application. So you can create application set directly from um, the OpenShift uh, console. So once you create, you can go back to the Argo CD UI and you can see that two apps are created. So if you see the destination right here, this app is in cluster, but the other app is deployed into the, the remote cluster. So if you see the local app, which was deployed locally, was healthy and synced, but the remote app, uh, it failed. So if you click on sync fail, it says the namespace is not found. That means in the, in the remote cluster, we did not create the namespace. So we created the namespace, and that's something I showed you earlier as well, that the namespace has to exist before you create the application. 
so I created the namespace now, and now let's try to sync one more time. So if you click uh, synchronize, the application deployed into the remote cluster who will sync as well. All right, so it looks like both of our applications are now synced. So this was uh, using application set list generator example. Now let's try to delete this application. So let's say someone is being adventurous and trying to delete resources directly on your Kubernetes cluster. So what will happen? Since it's deployed using application set, this change uh, will be reverted. So you can see on the left, the application quickly became out of sync because it, it was deleted. But because you created these applications using uh, application set, uh, you can see the application, uh, Argo City application is again being created. So which is different than if you want, if you created an application using Argo CD, you could directly delete from, from Argo CD UI. But because you created using Argo City application set, even if you delete uh, from the UI or from the, from the CLI, because it's created and managed by application set, the applications will be created again. So that was a quick demo of uh, Argo City application set list generators. So going back to the presentation, uh, you can check, try out uh, the different generators uh, which are in this uh, demo right here. So in this demo, I went over uh, uh, some of the other types of generators, which are uh, Argo CD uh, application set uh, kit generator, and also the, the matrix generator. So that's you can try out on your own. So at this time, I'd like to thank you for attending my sessions and uh, welcome any questions you might have. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, we're just waiting to see if there are any questions. Um, okay, we, we have a question in um, for you, Devan. Is there any way can you join the call or would you like to do the thing by chat, the question by chat? All right, perfect. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So what's the first right. question we have? All right, so we have a question here for you. Um, do you have any thoughts on annual installation of Argo CD versus using the GitOps operator? Thanks for that question, Anish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can install Argo CD manually on your cluster, either uh, on OpenShift cluster or on a Kubernetes cluster. But what GitOps operator, OpenShift GitOps operator gives you is out of the box that Argo CD instance, setting up namespaces, um, application set controller, uh, and also there are some um, uh, auth settings on, on what you can versus can't do uh, around some best practices. There's also the GitOps uh, application uh, manager. Uh, there is a, a CLI. Uh, it was called CAMP previously, which creates an opinionated set of uh, uh, pipeline and, uh, uh, and GitOps resources for you. So those all you get out of the box using OpenShift GitOps operator. So I'd say if you're already on OpenShift, using OpenShift GitOps operator uh, probably would be an ideal option. But if you're on vanilla Kubernetes, uh, absolutely, you can go with the Argo CD. All right, thank you for that. Um, just waiting to see if there are any other questions. Uh, I see a question from David. Uh, was there a method for deploying the SNO for public cloud for testing uh, cloud? Dot, is that is that for this session? I think it's from the previous session. Okay, okay. All right, uh, again, uh, thanks Sagarika for moderating, moderating this session. And thank, thank you, you so everyone much. who uh, joined into this session. Uh, I am active on LinkedIn and trying to up my Twitter game, 
So I'll hugely appreciate if you connect with me there. And if you have any follow-up question, please uh, reach out to me on either of those platforms. And uh, thank you. And I'm waiting to hear some feedback uh, from you on this session. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the talk. Yeah, thanks. Um, you can click the leave button on the top right. Um, thank you.